Hello everyone, look what just showed up. Let's unbox it. This is a Harp E. It's an affordable and portable, very portable, electric harp. It's available both fully assembled, but also as a kit, which is what I got here. I recently did an interview with Joris Beats, who's the designer of the Harp E, and you should check that out for some more information. I was quite taken with a harp and I knew I wanted to get one, but I wasn't sure whether I wanted to get one shipped back to my home in Canada or to get one while I'm traveling in Europe. In the end, I decided to get one in Europe while I'm here in Europe, and it's, it's been wonderful for traveling so far. I've been to three different countries. Now, this, this particular video is, is not a review video because I haven't really had enough experience. It's more about the process of building it. So pretty exciting. I'm going to make some dinner and then get started on putting this together. I'll take you along for the ride. So I hope in this video for you to, of course, see it get built, which I think is kind of fun just in and of itself. Also to get a sense, if this is something you're considering, to get a sense of, do you want to get the kit? Do you want to try to put it together yourself? And then also to give you just a little bit of maybe first hand uh, suggestions on a couple, couple aspects of putting it together. So let's talk, first of all, about the, the build experience and, and what it was like for me, at least. So there's a, an excellent video on the Harp E YouTube channel that you can follow along that I, I always had that playing. And, and of course, the wonderful thing about videos, you can go back and rewind and watch over a, a part. And I thought, it was, uh, I thought it was clear and easy to follow along. Now, the Harp E website suggests that it doesn't take that long to put it all together. And I think that's probably true if you've done a number of them and feel confident on how it all puts together, gets put together. For me, I was, of course, also trying to film as I was putting it together. And I didn't keep an exact log, but I want to say, so I, I got the harp on a Monday. And by Wednesday, I think it was pretty much put together and strung. And I, I want to estimate maybe eight to 10 hours. But then in addition to that, of course, the strings are going to stretch quite a bit. So constantly tuning now, it's, a, it's about a week later and, and they're, they're holding in pitch pretty well. So again, quite a bit of time then tuning over those next week. And then of course the regulation, and I'm just starting to do that. And it's not, it's not hard to do, but a little bit of extra time there as well. So if you want a fully playable harp, immediately. That's just something to keep in mind that, as I say, it takes some time to put it together. And then of course, there's some time for it to settle into tune. So uh, again, I think you want to give yourself maybe a week before you have it in shape, maybe a little bit less. I've been traveling the last few days, so I haven't had a chance to use, do as much with it as I might like. So something to, something to be aware of that way. So as I said, I found the process of putting it together reasonably straightforward in terms of knowing what to do. Definitely some fiddly and frustrating bits. Uh, it's also, of course, great practice for tying strings. If that's something that you haven't done much before, it can be a great practice to suddenly tie 24 knots, for example. Of course, on the other hand, it can be, if you, if you find tying strings stressful, it, it might be that by the end of this year, you're now, aha, I love tying strings, it's easy. Or it might be that you're, oh, this is just my worst nightmare, I don't know. Um, so for me, I mean, I'm, I'm accustomed to tying strings, but this was a slightly different setup. And so just a reminder again of how, when you're trying to put something together for the first time or whatever, it takes longer and, and feels a little bit less certain than if, if you know exactly what to do. I would say that uh, better tools would certainly make it easier. So I'm assembling this, uh, I'm recording this voiceover in Vienna, but I was assembling this in Zagreb, Croatia, in an apartment there. And so I'm just using the, the three Allen keys provided. And fortunately, the place I was staying had a pair of scissors which you would definitely need uh, to cut the strings. Um, so yeah, lucky that that was there. It, at home, I would have had a screwdriver with a nice comfortable handle with the appropriate Allen key type head, as well as a ratchet set. And I can't think that those combinations would have made it a lot easier. So my wrists and arms definitely got quite sore 
using the Allen key. And I think anyone who's ever assembled IKEA furniture knows that yes, you could use the Allen key, but for example, if you have an electric screwdriver, it's a lot easier and, and a lot less painful potentially. So, I mean, my, my wrists are fine now and a week later, but at doing it over those three days, it definitely puts a bit of a strain on the wrist just using the Allen key. So again, if you have access to tools that can make it a little bit easier. Um, they mentioned in the video that there are a couple spots where you could potentially use a little bit of electric screwdriver, but I, I would say again, if you had a ratchet set and a screwdriver, that would be fantastic. I also wanted to share the story of the sort of the, the how it got to me. So as I said, I'm in Europe right now. I, I, I knew I wanted to get the harp because it is relatively quite inexpensive and I wanted to mess around with it, even though I've got kind of a similar, the, my Firefly electric harp, it's kind of a similar idea, but this, this has some different aspects. And again, this is, not a, this is not a review. I haven't had enough time to play around with it yet. So stay tuned for that. I will, I will do a, a sort of a review video. But as I said, I knew I wanted to get one, but I, I wasn't sure that I wanted to get one while I'm in Europe because I try to travel as light as possible. I just have a, a small suitcase and a, a camera bag. And did I really want to add one extra thing to, to carry around? So and then I decided, yes, I did. Because again, it's also nice to have a harp with me wherever I am and, and potentially to record some harpists in the wild stuff with this. So I was in Italy, I, I said, yes, I would like, I would like it. And I was gonna be in uh, Croatia next, Dubrovnik, Croatia. So I had it shipped there and uh, I thought, hope, hopefully, uh, that there would be plenty of time for it to arrive before I was going to leave Dubrovnik. But it didn't get there, it didn't get there, and so I got in touch with a shipping company and arranged for it to be instead shipped to Zagreb, where I was going to go over the next day. Great. And then that, that day, it was a Wednesday, I, as I'm leaving for the airport, I get a notice saying, oh, it's being delivered. It's going to be delivered that day in Dubrovnik. Aye. So apparently, while they tried to change the address, the shipping company, they weren't able to get it to the driver in time. So yes, in fact, it got delivered to that uh, hotel in Dubrovnik. And meanwhile, I'm in Zagreb. So uh, I talked to GLS, the shipping company, and okay, yes, yes, they'll arrange to get it picked up from Dubrovnik and shipped to me in Zagreb. So that's, by the time I think I'm able to talk with them, that's Thursday. And uh, then late Friday, the tracking number they gave me that was supposed to be the person picking it up and bringing it there, saying, oh no, it's actually been picked up by somebody else or, or some other shipping company is being shipped by some other shipping company or some other courier. And then GLS was not available over the weekend. So I'm stressing out a little bit trying to find out what happened. And Monday, I'm supposed to check out of the my current place in Zagreb and I was going to a different location. And that current place was the address that I'd given them. And oh, anyway, <laughs> so Monday morning, bright and early, I talked to GLS and there, the people I talked to, they don't have, they don't know what's happening. Well, I don't know. You were the one who arranged to have it picked up. No, 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 no. It was your, you were, you were, you had, you were shipping it to me here in Zagreb. And, um, so I'm stressing out a little bit and then I get a call and oh, it's the courier. They're going to be delivering it. Um, and just checking to make sure that I'm there. So this was like nine o'clock in the morning. I had to check out at 10, so that was perfect. I, I got the box, I got all my luggage and went over to this other apartment, a beautiful apartment. You, this is where I assembled it. You can see it in the video. So uh, a happy ending, but uh, a little bit stressful. And then in the end, it was almost, yeah, I guess almost uh, two weeks from the time I ordered it to the time I got it. And it's funny because I have a student in California who ordered one and for her, it took four days shipping. So <laughs> just the, yeah, the, the, the vagaries of, of uh, shipping, I suppose. Anyway, so I did, I did end up with it and yeah, really happy and a great story in the end. So then let's, let's uh, 
let me, I guess, muse a little bit on whether you should get it as a kit or as a fully assembled harp. So you definitely save some money by getting it as a kit. But as I say, it took me quite some time to put it together. And, and so in that sense, uh, uh, is it, you, you, have to, you have to enjoy that time spent putting it together. If, you, if, you're, if you're getting it as a kit just to save money, but you're going to hate the experience of putting it together, it might be better just to get it fully assembled. And of course, I think that idea of putting a harp together, being a part of, of creating this harp, is a very attractive story, a very attractive narrative, right? As, as you hear that, you might go, yeah, that's what I want to do. But uh, I, think, I think it's worth really thinking about that. Is that what you want to do? And so I guess to think about your, your experience in terms of do you like building things? Do you have much experience building things? Is that something you like to do? Or is that something you find stressful? Uh, of course, maybe you have a friend or a family member who, even if you're not super comfortable about building things, maybe they are and they could help. Or maybe, I don't know, another harpist who you, the two of you want to get one, both want to get one and, and build them together for moral support. I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, to try to try to just think for yourself what Yes, the, track, the narrative might be attractive, but will the actual <laughs> building it be something that you enjoy or that you find super stressful or frustrating or whatever? Um, at the same time, I think there's sort of that idea of experienced versus remembered time. And traveling is also a great example of that, where the experience we have of something, how, how so an event as we're experiencing it what we experience then can be quite different than what we remember so an example would be a marathon your experience as it happens might be just pain right but then your remembered experience your rem the remembered event might be you know you, you feel very proud or, or, or it becomes, it becomes uh, a shining memory rather than the memory of pain. So even though the sort of the, the realist part of the experience was, was that experience, was the experience time the, 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 as it happened, the remembered event is the one that lasts forever, right? So the experience in the moment is brief in a sense, but the, the memory lasts forever. And again, sometimes they don't really match up. So for me, for example, the, the, maybe the, the strain, the pain on my arms, or definitely some moments of frustration, um, uh, that f for me was kind of faded from memory. And, and now I, I just have this, this great memory of, of putting this together in this, uh, in this uh, apartment in Zagreb. Uh, so, but again, your, your mileage may vary. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it ends up being a great memory, even if it's a bit, bit hard and stressful in the moment. But maybe it ends up being something that you never get around to doing, in which case you might as well have bought it fully assembled or, 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 or things go wrong or whatever. So I don't know, I, I can't tell you, but um, I will say that I, I do feel it is, if you are somewhat uh, comfortable building things, I think it's, it's fairly straightforward. I think the instructions are clear and yeah, I think it's fairly straightforward. So here I am now in an apartment in Vienna and I wanted to just talk about three things that I think are worth mentioning as, as I built it that I, I, I was aware of. So first of all, I think uh, is you're putting in these big bolts around the harp. The video mentions that depending on whether you plan to use the stand at all, that if you plan to never use the stand, if you never plan to use it, that you could put in the clip for the strap, not only up here, but also down here as well. And it sounds a little bit uh, stressful in terms of having to make a decision right now and, 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 and maybe never being able to change it. But in fact, it would be extremely easy. Let me just zoom you in. It would be extremely easy to just unscrew this 
uh, this bolt right here and take out the washer, spacer, um, put the strap around it, put the spacer in, uh, thread things back in, and, and there you go. So I think the good news is that it's not, uh, that whatever decision you make, you can change. And so my feeling would be that to start with, I would definitely not put that lower strap on because this stand is, is one, of the, one of the highlights, I think, of the, of the design. And you can, you can use this strap right through here and then clipped onto that spacer bar at, at the bottom. So anyway, just being aware that it's not an irrevocable decision. And then there's a couple of times where we're given the instruction to uh, screw some things in a certain length, approximate length. So these, the tuning pins, and then these, the regulation uh, screws. Let me again try to zoom you in a little bit here. So with these, these control the regulation in the sense that they control how far down the levers will go. So you will screw them in or out to help make it so that it's in tune not only when the string is up, but also when it's down. And so that's something I'm working on right now. And uh, so far at least, they, they do have to go in quite a ways, but initially I didn't. And it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't matter how far in they are. The only thing is it's a little bit easier if you're using the Allen key to put, tighten them in quite a bit without if the mechanism is not on yet because you can rotate around and around, whereas as they get closer and closer, then you run into maybe hitting into the mechanism. Let's see, you can't quite see that. Hitting into the mechanism as you're trying to, to turn that around. Um, so maybe I'll zoom out just a tiny bit. Uh, but anyway, so it, as you're first assembling it, it's not at all essential how, how far you screw those in. Just enough that they will stay. Uh, worth maybe putting them in fairly far, but again, you're going to be adjusting that as you do the regulation. And then finally, it's the, it's the tuning pins, as it were, uh, which are these. And again, maybe I'll zoom in for you. Um, and they, uh, so I would say that it would be nice if the hole where the string goes through is initially sort of relatively centered along the soundboard. And so you can see these are all, everything is in, everything has been tightened. So initially these were out a little bit further than that and that seemed pretty good. So it's not, it's not a precise thing, but you don't want to screw them in too far, I don't think, because then the hole where the string goes through is maybe too close to the side. Um, but Again, it's not, it's not that it's got to be a very specific uh, amount. Now, as I say, this isn't a review, right? So stay tuned for that as I get a chance to play around with it. I'm here in Vienna for several weeks, so I'm going to get a chance to actually play and maybe do some Harpets in the Wild and, and yeah, give you a more hands-on review. I do want to answer three questions before I go that, that I, I encountered as I've been posting about this on social media. One is about the string tension. So it's got a really nice string tension, I think because of the, the design, right, with, the, with a symmetrical uh, neck, it, it allows it to load quite a bit of tension on the strings. And so they feel, I would say, very close to concert tension. Yeah, really, really a nice, nice tension on them. The spacing is definitely smaller. So I'll have to try to get a, maybe a comparison video with, next to a pedal harp or something like that, but it is smaller. It's okay. Let me zoom in again for you. It's okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm used, to, used to playing on different harps with different spacing. Um, but you can see that, you know, there's room for the fingers to go through without touching, but it's definitely a little bit smaller than, say, a pedal harp spacing. And then the final question that I got asked quite a bit was, will it fit in a carry-on? 
And so I think that's kind of two questions. Will it physically fit in, in, in the carry-on hold in, in airlines? And, and yes, probably in most of them. But the question I want to answer is, will it fit in a carry-on sized uh, suitcase? And I'm going to show you that. So this is the suitcase that I'm traveling with. And it is, of course, di different airlines have different regulations, but this one is already, for some airlines, just a little bit too tall. So already there would be a little bit of uncertainty if, if you're trying to fit it in this in terms of it could potentially be turned down um, as a carry-on. And so now if we take the harp, you will see that there is no way that it would fit in this. And that, that's just the case, I think, with no matter how small the harp, if it's, if it's this, you know, 24 strings or whatever, it's not going to fit in a legal carry-on size. It doesn't mean you might not be able to carry it on. And it's also, of course, the type of design that you could put in a larger suitcase with a bunch of clothes and potentially feel, potentially feel okay about taking that in as checked luggage. But anyway, I'll talk more about that later, but just to give you an idea of the relative size. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. And stay tuned for more adventures with Harp E. See you in a couple weeks for another episode of Harp Tuesday. <laughs> Cheers.